it took me until age 50 to realize that I'd been lied to. And as my, my health got worse and worse, it was unbelievable because I was doing everything. It wasn't, and many people come to me for consultations and they, they freely admit, oh, I, I ate terribly or I drank a lot or smoked and all this. Well, I didn't do any of that. And I should have been really, really healthy and fit. I was an advanced personal trainer, not eating red meat, avoiding saturated fat, eating fruit and veg, porridge oats in the morning or oatmeal, as they say in America, and having blueberries and all the alleged superfoods. And uh, by the time I got to age 49, I was pre-diabetic, had a coronary artery calcium scan of 639, lower left quadrant pain, which is where we're getting back to the fiber argument. And I was having a colonoscopy and it, it was it was a, it was terrible. So anyway, uh, my Substack article is entitled The Great Fiber Con, How Your Gut Bacteria um, is being given a disservice. And I just go through all the sort of the conventional wisdom, which is fiber is essential for gut health. Well, we have many people without fiber and their gut health seems to improve. I see it all the time. IBS, uh, Crohn's, like I had lower left quadrant pain, which was which was terrible. And the argument is, if you have no fiber, you don't get any butyrate and therefore your intestine is going to be doomed. Um, and, you know, all this stuff about eating the rainbow and all that. But actually what happens in your gut, you know, why butyrate is, is important, um, you know, it is a short chain fatty acid, which brings us to another thing. Uh, many people in the fiber camp, I suppose, are also anti-saturated fats. What well, a short chain fatty acid is the saturated fat. So are saturated fats good or are they bad? I mean, that's one of those that I find really frustrating. 